Okay, the next topic is dot product. What is the dot product of two vectors? How do you calculate it? Why is it useful? Let's introduce this stuff right now. So the dot product of two vectors is defined as follows. If A is the vector A1, A2, those are the x and y components of A, and B is B1, B2, then you can calculate A dot B. I know you're used to a dot being multiplication, but with vectors, it's not multiplication, it's the dot product. So A dot B equals, you just multiply the x components, and then you add that to the product of the y components. So you'll get just a number. When you take the dot product of two vectors, the answer is just a number, or what we call a scalar when we're in the vector world. Okay. Uh, let's do an example of this. Let's do a few examples of this. Find p dot q. Okay. Well, here's p. Let's do th let's do this three different times. Okay. P and Q. P is the vector 3, 6. Q is the vector negative 4, 2. You could graph those. There's no need because finding the dot product is just a matter of multiplying the x components, a1 and b1, multiplying the y components, a2 and b2. So here our x components are 3 and negative 4. So let's write P dot Q equals 3 times negative 4 plus 6 times 2. 3 times negative 4, that's negative 12 plus positive 12, that equals zero. That vector has a product, a dot product, those vectors, P and Q, have a dot product of zero, okay? That means something. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, part B. Oh, what the? Oh, these vectors are written differently. If you watched the last video, this is no surprise to you. This is component form, standard component form for vectors. This right here is, these vectors are written now as a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. Maybe this has a different name, I don't know what it is. Anyway, this is literally just the same thing as two, five, and eight, four. So don't be confused because of these I's and J's. That's all it means. Okay, so finding the dot product goes the same way. Uh, it's the X components, which are two and eight, so P dot Q equals two times eight plus the product of the y components, five times four, two times eight, 16, plus 20, that's 36. So P and Q have a dot product of 36, okay? One more, you'll see why I'm doing three of these uh, when we get to the next video, because these all three of these vectors have different properties and uh, uh, pairs of vectors have different properties. I'll get to those in the next video, but we're, let's just practice doing the dot product here. Dot product for part C, P dot Q, is the X components, negative one times six, plus the Y components, the product of the Y components, negative nine times 54. Oof, I might need my calculator for that one. Negative one times six is negative six, plus, let's see, 10 times 54 would be 540, and take away one of those 54s, 496. Let's double check that. Nine times 54. 486, oops, forgot to carry the one, I guess, literally. So negative six plus negative 486. And when we add those together, negative six plus negative 46, we get negative 492 is the dot product of P and Q in that case, okay? So it's as easy as multiplying and adding, guys. Uh, so what's the point? Why are we doing this? You'll see one of the reasons the dot product is interesting is because it can tell us if two vectors are perpendicular. And that's important for other reasons, which we'll hopefully get to later on, okay? Can you guess which one of these pairs of vectors, P and Q, has are perpendicular? If you guessed part A, where the dot product was zero, you're correct, okay? It turns out that if you wanna find out whether two vectors are exactly perpendicular, 90 degrees, all you have to do is find the dot product and see if it's zero. Because if it is zero, they're perpendicular. And if it's not zero, then it's not perpendicular. I got this written down here as a theorem. You can add this to your notes if you want. Two vectors A and B are orthogonal. That's just a fancy word for perpendicular, okay? Now you know a new word, so you can sound even cooler uh, when you talk about math stuff. Two vectors A and B are orthogonal if and only if their dot product equals zero, okay? so. If the dot product equals zero, then they're orthogonal. And if they're orthogonal, the dot product equals zero. And if the dot product does not equal zero, they're not orthogonal and uh, vice versa, okay? So which one of these uh, pairs of vectors is orthogonal? This one right here, 
these, P and Q, are orthogonal in this case, but not in this case. These P and Q here are not perpendicular. They're at a different angle other than 90 degrees. And same thing for part C. Okay. So to figure out how we will, the next video we'll cover, okay, I know these vectors here aren't 90 degrees from each other, but what are they? Can we find out what angle they are? Yes. And same for part C, same for any pair of vectors. And that's what the next video will cover. And I will see you guys there. Bye.